guess. Uh, with the great birch. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to pick my way a little bit so you got a better sense. But, uh, oops, I should look where I'm walking here. There's the birch. And you may be able to see that uh, things are rather flooded. If you can see that Tory there. Tor is usually on dry ground in the, the uh, waters over that side of it. You may be able to notice the ducks that are there that are on the edge of the fire pit. And they're the cause of these ripples you may be seeing. There's maybe six of them over there, maybe uh, 25 yards away. And uh, this area around the base of the tree there was a little island yesterday, so all this water, unless it's been in too fast, uh, had pretty well surrounded us, this little island. And uh, I'll probably sink in the mud here, but you may be able to see the stones that are uh, apparently floating. Let me reach the camera a little bit more. Those stones are just on the dry ground at the edge of the pond for the uh, beaver and rain work together to bring us here. Anyway, the sun's uh, going down. There's a little pink in the sky. I thought I'd do a little meditation here. Uh, I was thinking about where to set the camera up. Something a filmmaker would have done before they hit record. And uh, I thought, uh, do a little meditation here on this sort of uh, ground that yesterday had a different feeling to it. Like, oh, that's still dry and uh, surrounded by water. And as the water recedes, things have really changed in how they appear. And uh, I'm trying to put a stick in the ground here to lean the, uh, uh, lean the camera against know if I'm going to have the luck that I would have expected. It's quite dense. Okay, we'll try that. And then whatever angle it happens to give us is what we get. So, it's just, it is that angle or something like it. Let me see if I can find some solid ground here. But seeing that distinction between the water and the ground and the, the sense of stranded, sense of island, uh, starting to think a little bit about the idea that uh, <clears throat> the earth feels supportive. And then in contrast to that, there's the water, the flowing, ever-changing. But the earth is revealed here to be ever-changing. You know, it was dry, now it's wet. You know, it's underwater, it used to be beside the water. I'm standing where it was uh, wet uh, earlier. And uh, of course water changes. We see that quite readily. But I was thinking about the idea of, you know, earth, the ground uh, being the unchanging, uh, the thing that supports us. But the, the flow is also something that supports us, you know, the ability to change. So I want to just see if I can uh, recognize the sameness of the two, the water and the earth. So I'm on very mushy ground here because, of course, I've just been uh, unsubmerged for a couple hours. Ducks are swimming where they often walk. <laughs> and the uh, fire pit is flooded. So I'm going to um, do a little bit of uh, sort of water and earth posture.
neighbors or some friend back there. I do. I don't know if you will. Try to change the movement just to get the kind of indistinct play at the movements. <coughs> Facing the moon here, hearing the rooster crow. Indistinct expression of the the energies of uh, the swarming earth prior. I can feel in the body something that I was had just a few moments ago in my mind. An idea of them being related. I can hear people talking back there, probably about the water, which means they see me, which means they may be coming over to see what I'm doing about it. Uh, and combine that with the idea that uh, it's uh, getting quite cold and I've been partly submerged all day or much of the day in the cold and uh, probably not the very healthiest thing to do this, uh, this morning the uh, labyrinth was submerged so I will say good day and good night and hello and thank you.